All right, so let's talk a little bit about the history of JavaScript. The history of JavaScript is particularly particularly important because, like I said, uh, the reasons why JavaScript was created affects the way it behaves and the way it was designed. So let's take a brief look at the history. So JavaScript was created by this guy called Brendan Eich uh, at Netscape. Uh, you know, this was during the time of the browser wars uh, in the mid 90s. Uh, the two popular browser vendors were uh, Netscape uh, with their Netscape Navigator and uh, Microsoft with Internet Explorer. So Brendan Eich was, uh, you know, he joined Netscape and he was tasked with the uh, effort to create some kind of a scripting language for Netscape that runs on the browser. So Java was really, really popular in those days. And Java had the concept of applets, which let you build client-side applications. So it, it was the rich client application model of those days. You could create applets and, um, and have this rich client um, experience on the browser. So Brendan was tasked with the effort of creating the scripting language for the browser. And he created this language. He called it LiveScript, but uh, the people wanted to use the popularity of Java in those days, so they called it JavaScript. That's a whole long story that I don't want to get into, but uh, that has actually caused a lot of confusion among developers of JavaScript itself. JavaScript has nothing to do with Java. It just has the name, a portion of the name is Java, be purely because of marketing reasons, nothing else. JavaScript was created to complement Java, right? You use Java to build server-side applications and you use JavaScript for client-side applications. At least that was the idea. So Brendan rushed to create JavaScript. Fun fact, JavaScript was created roughly around 10 days. Yes, you heard that right. It was created in 10 days and it was rushed to production. It was filled with bugs. Of course, it did not have all the features that we know of JavaScript today but uh, it was the first version and uh, there were some mistakes made. Some of them still live in the language to this day. So um, that was the origin of JavaScript and some of the motives behind JavaScript was to make it easy to use, easy for newcomers. That was one of the design goals of the language. S contrast that to Java, which was considered the professional language which advanced developers would use JavaScript was considered an easy scripting language for anybody to get into, right? Even people who are new to programming could just pick up some basic concepts and then use JavaScript. This is an important, con important point because this has affected a lot of the design decisions in JavaScript. JavaScript as it is, out of the box, is a very forgiving language. Okay, what do I mean by forgiving? If you write code in Java and you make a mistake, the compiler is gonna yell at you, right? It has, the program has to be perfect before the compiler even generates the bytecode. That is drastically different from JavaScript. In the case of JavaScript, the interpreter, it doesn't end the program there, right? It makes assumptions, right? It forgives your mistakes, makes assumptions, and proceeds with the execution. This was consciously decided in the part of the, uh, uh, you know, the JavaScript developers because they wanted the language to be easy to use. They didn't want new developers to get bogged down by all these rules and have the program be just perfect. They wanted the language to be forgiving so that newcomers who possibly would make mistakes could still have the program run, right? This is both good and bad. There are certain things, certain assumptions that the interpreter makes which can be very surprising and very unexpected. So I'll talk about some of those uh, assumptions that it makes and some things to watch out for as we go along this course. So, but yeah, that was, that was the design decision. That was, JavaScript was designed to be easy for newcomers. Uh, once JavaScript was created, uh, there was a rush to make it a standard. Again, this was due to the competition between Microsoft and Netscape. I'm not going to go into the details, but Netscape decided to standardize the language. And when you say standardize, it means that there is a specification for the language. And once you follow the specification, any browser that claims to run JavaScript should work with the language that's built according to the specification. Okay, so JavaScript was standardized by a committee called ECMA and the name got assigned ECMAScript. Okay, so when you hear the name ECMAScript, 
It's nothing different from JavaScript, right? JavaScript is also sometimes referred to as ECMAScript. Now, there are different versions of ECMAScript. Right now, we are the latest version of the specification is ECMAScript 6. So if you hear ECMAScript 6, you know that's what it is. Right now, ECMAScript 6 is not fully supported across browsers. The best uh, chances of a fully supported uh, you know, specification is ECMAScript 5. So a lot of this course is gonna cover ECMAScript 5. I am going to mention a few concepts that's introduced in ECMAScript 6. And when that comes up, I'm gonna highlight that it is a new version. It may not be supported in all browsers. So if you wanna play safe, you should use only the specification ECMAScript 5. As of today, as of me recording this video, this could again change in the future and I'm sure it will. But uh, as of today, ECMAScript 5 is your safest bet.